Someone pointed out to me the other day that there's no great tribulation in the NRSV. Revelation 7.14 speaks about who come out of the great ordeal, but there's no great tribulation. What's going on? First of all, let me just say that it is a possible interpretation. Revelation 7.14 in the NRSV says, I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Ordeal is a perfectly legitimate translation of phlipsis and all you have here with teis megales is an adjective in the second attributed position, so it would be the great tribulation or the great ordeal. So it's a legitimate translation. What's interesting, though, is that when you start going back through the different translations, you can see that the NRSV is the only one to do so. The ESV is the great tribulation. CSB, the great tribulation. NRSV, there we go, the NIV, the Great Tribulation, the Net Bible, the Great Tribulation, the NLT, the Great Tribulation. Now, just because the NRSV is the only one that doesn't have the word tribulation, and you notice that everyone else kept it lowercase, they didn't make it uppercase, all right? Even in the King James, you have Great Tribulation, no capital G or capital T. Well, the real issue is, what is it referring to? The confusion is compounded when you start looking at how Philipsis is used in Revelation. Just take a quick gander through the five. In 1.9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Okay, nothing referenced there to a great tribulation. In 2.9, I know your affliction. Okay. 2.10, you will have affliction. And then we get to this interesting one in 2.22. We'll come back to it in a second. Because what's interesting is that it's the same preposition, the same noun, philipsis, and the same adjective. The difference is that in 7.14, you have an article. So is there any significance in that? As always, context is always the guide. And so the question is, is there anything biblically that would help us understand what the passage in seven means? And the answer is yes. Commentaries are agreed that this is going back to Daniel 12.1. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. People understand that this is the genesis, the idea of this massively horrid great tribulation that is going to occur at the end of times. There's been a lot of tribulations for Christians throughout the centuries, but because of Daniel 12, 1, we believe there's going to be one massive one at the end of time. If you go through some of the other biblical passages, you have Jesus' prophecy in Matthew 24, 21, for then there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. You notice that he doesn't use the great tribulation, but he's certainly describing the greatest of all tribulations. Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica about the coming rebellion and the man of lawlessness, certainly referring to an end event and you also have this same event referred to but without the same language and that's one of the things that's important in doing exegesis oftentimes the same thing can be referred to but with different words so in revelation 11 7 and now when they have finished their testimony the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them so this is a major tribulation in 11 verses 8 to 10 you get this destruction of the two witnesses most likely the witnessing church and their bodies are going to lie on the public square and for three and a half days people will gaze at them they're going to gloat all over them they're going to give presents to each other because they're so happy the church is gone in 13 7 you're going to have this power that's given to wage war against god's holy people and in 16 6 you have the shedding of the blood of your holy people 
In other words, you have many references to this massive time of affliction. So taking that as a background, when you come to 714, it's out of the tribulation, the great. It's more likely that John is referring to the same event that Jesus and Daniel have referred to, and Paul, as this massive tribulation that is going to come at the end of time. It certainly was prefigured in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, but it's going to be a greater destruction at the end of time. The real question in my mind is Revelation 2.22 and 7.14 connected, and there's two ways to look at it. One is to ask yourself, why is there an article? Since articles are often dropped out of prepositional phrases, why is there an article? When you see an article there, uh, normally something special is going on. It could be emphatic out of the great tribulation. Or, as Beale suggests in his commentary, it could also be anaphoric, which means out of the tribulation, the tribulation meaning the one that I spoke of back up here. And if Beale is right and others, then 222 is also a reference to the great tribulation that will come at the end of time. So it is an interesting translation conundrum. The NRSV is certainly legitimate in translating that way. But because of 222 and because of all the other biblical references to it, I don't think that they're accurate. And that idea of a or the great tribulation, and frankly, I would capitalize the G and the T, I think. You know, there are quite a few verses in the New Testament especially, but also in the Old Testament, especially the Psalms, that talks about all true followers of God are going to be in conflict with culture, and it's what you would expect. So, example, in 2 Timothy 3.12, indeed, also all wishing to live God of lives in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So persecution, suffering, tribulation, affliction, this is just part of what it is to be a Christian. Our master was afflicted, he was persecuted, and a disciple is to be like his master. And in fact, we are filling up the sufferings of Christ, as the Bible says. But those references are to the daily life of a Christian. And the reference in Revelation is to the great and the worst tribulation in which those who are faithful, those who conquer, nikao, in Revelation, will be rewarded. 